Hello, friends. It is Thursday, and it's a really special Thursday. I am super excited for the interview today. And um, we even did a little test. It wasn't working perfectly, but I think it will now, hopefully. You can hear me, and you can hear both of us. I am interviewing a legend today, Mickey Munoz. Not only is he a SUP legend, he was a legend before that in the whole surfing world. So one of the most amazing humans, so much aloha. He and his wife Peg are um, in California right now. They spend a ton of time in Mexico, but I'm so excited. I see all the little hearts going to um, have them join us. We're on SUP Connect. This is every Thursday. It's been over a year that I have the pleasure of interviewing people in the world of paddling. And today I have goosebumps <laughs> because it's someone I am lucky to know in person and I'm super excited to bring on and join us and probably a little peg too. Aloha from Macedonia. Oh my gosh. Thank you again for sharing where you're from. I think it's so cool. And you're on and can we hear you? Oh, oh. we can hear you. Hi, Christian. Yes, it's working. <laughs> Why the rest have... of the world? <laughs> hey. <laughs> so scooch up just a little so we can see your lovely mug. Yeah. But um, yeah. we've got a bunch okay, of people here. on with us. Uh, and we'll have more join while we're talking. But wow, what a honor and pleasure to get to talk to you. And um, this is recorded. We save it for later. But right now, we have some people joining us live. You know who one of the first ones was? Terry Plunkett, our mutual friend, jumped Hi, on Terry. right away. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't seen you in a long time. You've been traveling. You spend so much time in beautiful Mexico. Um, but let's just get right in because you tell such wonderful stories, and we want to know your stand-up paddle story. Again, you were a legend before you even became a sup legend, but we um, focus on stand-up paddling, so let's start with that. You saw it really early, um, and you made it happen. Tell us about how you got into SUP. Yeah, um, you know, I <clears throat> I was still surfing. Uh, I mean, prone surfing. And uh, went to Malibu. And uh, it was a big swell, one of the biggest swells of the year. And uh, I'm paddling out oh, from the inside. And, uh, you know, the waves are well overhead. And, of course, you're out there with, 200 of your best friends. <laughs> and uh, I saw a guy take off on the, on the uh, second point as I'm paddling out. And my strategy was to hope somebody get, you know, they, they get wiped out and, and maybe there'd be a wave that I could, I could, uh, you know, have no one on except me. So anyway, I'm paddling out and I, I see a wave coming and a bunch of people fall off and I go, hey, it's my wave. I turn around, I get in the wave, I'm up, I'm headed towards the pier and I hear behind you and I look behind me and it's Laird Hamilton. <laughs> and he's riding a 12 foot board and and hauling ass and I I didn't. If I saw him, I didn't think he had a prayer making that wave. But anyway, I I apologize and I I pull out and and he he goes on a little further and pulls out and and uh, and I paddle back out with him and he's standing and paddling with a with a big paddle and I I'd never really seen that before. And I was so impressed that he had made that wave all the way from the second point and made it through the the 200 of our best friends. And we talked a little bit on the way out and I asked him what he, what he was doing, how he was doing it, and what's the deal on the paddle. And he said, well, he said, you know, usually cut it off about one shuckle over your head. I love that. And so I was so excited about it after surfing that day. I, I came home that night and I had a kayak paddle here and I, 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 I measured it, cut it off, and I, I took epoxy resin and a broom stick and I made a cross handle and glassed it on. And the next day I uh, decided I'd try stand up paddling. So luckily, uh, I had done a 12-foot 
board for Surtec, and it was big enough for me to stand on. Actually, you know, had I looked in the future far enough and made it a couple inches wider, I would be rich and famous now. <laughs> because <laughs> You are famous. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> well, rich. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I took that board and my and my paddle, and I went down to a, one of our local semi at that time secret breaks, and surf was still big, and I ended up I paddled out reasonably well, uh, not so easy. I mean, it was not as easy as the good surfers make it look. Anyway, I. I was out probably an hour or so. I finally caught a wave and, and you know, I'm going, I don't know, this is not so easy. I'm going to go back to surfing. Well, that lasted about, mm, I tried it again. You know, I went, okay, instead of trying to surf, maybe I'll go into the harbor and, and paddle there. It was a heck of a lot easier. And started to get my paddle strokes down. And then I, I, uh, I'm trying to remember. Um, Do you remember about what year that was? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It was early. <laughs> I don't know, 15 years ago or maybe longer now, how time flies. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I, I, uh, I, got, I got a real stand-up paddle that was made specifically for stand-up and that made a huge difference over my kayak paddle with the broomstick yeah and a yeah with the broomstick. Handle. did you save that though the paddle or the yes. broomstick the no, that original paddle oh no, that would have no, been really cool good, to put in a museum <laughs> no that's a good question i i might have it i don't throw anything away so i okay. might have it somewhere I have save that. that i will anyway um uh, so, you know, the more I, I paddled, the better I got at it. And, and then I, you know, when I got a real paddle, kind or a, sorry, a, a, a stand-up paddle, mm -hmm. then surfing became a little easier. And I was able to, to start to surf. And then I, I, the advantages for me over prone paddling and the fact that, you know, I'm, I was still, you know, an aging surfer trying to ride shortboards and, and, you know, if you don't stand up in the right place at the right time, the party's over. And so I was having more failures than, than successes surfing and the stand up uh, kind of because I'm riding that 12 foot board, I now can ride waves that most surfers aren't even interested in or trying to catch. And so I, uh, the more I did it, the more I liked it. And, and, uh, and then from a, a, a shaper surfboard designer standpoint, it was a real challenge mm. uh, in design to, to make, a board that was stable enough to stand on and yet small enough, light enough to be able to maneuver in the surf. So uh, for me, it was, that was another real hook. And then as it progressed, I then got uh, uh, a really, really, really good paddle. Quick blade, I'm going to Mention quick blade because Absolutely. they were yeah. the best, and and that made such a huge difference, uh, both in surfing and just paddling. And in fact, one of my major advice to anybody starting to paddle: you can paddle a door, you can paddle a table, you can paddle a boat, but the paddle is the key. That is the in my mind, the the most critical thing, if you're going to spend any money, spend I, it on a really good paddle. I and totally agree. I think once you're ready to make that decision about a fixed height instead of an adjustable, 
heavy paddle that you might have gotten in a package deal in that first board if you got something start with that 100 exactly. percent agree because it makes such a difference and some of the people who don't enjoy it that i talk to it's because their arms got tired of this really heavy paddle so makes all the difference to have a quality paddle and, Good and you know if, if you're going to go with the advice part of it um the next thing besides the paddle is yeah you can paddle a door and you can paddle a table but it's best to get a board that is stable, that, you know, is light enough for you to be able to manage and carry and get to the water mm -hmm. and, and stable enough to stand on. And, but it, it can be, you know, you can go to Costco and buy, buy a Costco board even, you know, but, but, uh, at least you've got something that's easy to paddle or, and stand on. And, and then, you know, don't try and paddle around the world the first few times out, <laughs> you know, paddle depending on your physicality, but, you know, paddle, uh, you know, not to get really tired, but you want to be having fun. You want yes. the board stable enough so you're not falling off. It's not a challenge to be on the board. It's not a challenge to get the board to the water. The easier it is to do, the more you're going to do it. And, and, and then take it easy. If you're a surfer and you want to try and ride waves, you already know how to surf. But you need to know how to stand up paddle. You need to get your your mind body into your brain into to balancing you need to be able to turn your board pivot your board you need to figure out the strokes and 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 you need to learn that you don't need to learn to surf you already know how to do that and then of course you know actually riding waves is another issue we can go into if you want but that's kind of my advice for beginning paddler. Great yeah, advice. It. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. So you were in very early and I think uh, you've told me before, was it 2005 or six or something when you, I mean, to be building your own paddle means you were in pretty darn early. Um, glad you found that lighter paddle, but I am impressed that you saw a vision for it right away. Cause I definitely, some people we talk to, Weren't especially surfers. Sometimes they're not so sure about that sport over there for a while, um, and then they've seen others that help them see. But it's great that you happen to have that chat with Laird right from the first time that you saw it to um, want to go home and give it a try. So you've branched out in a lot of ways. Of course, you're a surfer, and we'll talk more about surfing. But you have been very involved in you know events that have happened, like uh, f fun events. One of when I was first starting, you had. Um, this event that I'm wearing a autograph t-shirt from <laughs> mongoose. Yeah. Um, of course, battle of the paddle, you know, what we dearly miss our battle of the paddle Pacific paddle games, Doheny event, which of course was that combined surfing event. So talk some about how you got into some of these events. Cause you definitely were early in, in helping them happen or being, I mean, this one's named after you. <laughs> well, you know, thank you, Sparky Longley, for for Rainbow Sandals uh, doing the paddle battle because I think that was the real catalyst for uh, you know bringing a lot of people into the into the sport and and of course into the racing end of it for again my shaper designer mentality and also building boats. I had a pretty good idea of where and how to make race boards and combined with, you know, the surfing end of it and, and the, and the racing end of it, uh, I could kind of envision where the design of boards were going to go. Also having started snowboarding early, early on and having been a skier, um, running the gamut of, of, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you're standing up, you're not surfing anymore. Uh, I had to, I realized that 
early on in snowboarding, skiers looked at snowboarders, and I don't blame them because snowboarders were not aware of the kind of the unwritten rules of, mm -hmm. of you know, you fall down, you make a hole, and you, you fill your sits mark. You know, that was the old skiing thing. And, you know, a bunch of young kids up there with their pants around their butts and and <laughs> and and not respecting the tradition of skiing, you know, pissed the skiers off until finally, and, you know, it's funny because I'd ride up the lift next to a skier and they'd, they'd move as far away as they could from you, you know, and then after a few years when when ski designs ski designers realize the value of snowboard design they redesign skis and it actually helped save skiing and and then i'm riding up the lift with you know thousand dollars worth of patagonia's gear on and a and a beautiful laminated uh snowboard wooden snowboard now they're snuggling next to you going hey that's pretty cool <laughs> and so the same kind of thing happened in 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 sup yeah. it, it came from the surfing side and and then when racing got into vogue if you will because again sparky and and the paddle battle um it it became more and more accepted and and it was funny even in the and you mentioned uh um because i i mentioned something about i was showing you some photos and i mentioned or i was showing you some sub surfing photos and then you mentioned that that and i said i was a referee for the paddle battle and the last paddle battle was not at Doheny, but at Salt Creek. And it happened that it was one of the biggest swells of the year. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the local Salt Creek surfers were all pissed off because, you know, the, you know, the sub people took it over and, and a lot of negative surf press came out of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, you guys, you little bastards <laughs> we went to a zillion city council meetings to try and save salt creek so we could surf there and yeah yeah guys are getting people are getting wiped out surf was big guess what they're riding 14 foot boards and not everybody's getting wiped out a lot of people are ripping on a 14 foot board try it you think it's easy try it and they are surfing and so I think that event and 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 the fact that the etiquette for uh, sup surfers riding waves they became more aware and so sharing and the surfers finally realized it. You know what? Maybe this isn't that bad. I, I'm not going. I'm not ready to do it yet, but. Someday, you know, when you can't stand up anymore and you want to keep surfing, you know, stand up on a board and paddle. Yeah. I have to throw in because uh, the blur, Dave Bainey is on right now and he said, me and Mickey had an epic session at Salt Creek Bop. Great memory <laughs> with our official jerseys on. So we I did. think some of the actual participants were jealous that instead of racing, you guys were being officials and in between races, oh, we, you, we were, you were we putting on a show. Those. We could have sold those referee shirts on eBay for a zillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Everybody wanted that referee shirt because that let you get out there. Yeah, that was fantastic. Everybody. It's yeah. interesting you mentioned, I do think at the beginning, having a lot, um, there were le other legends like you who part of it was being a little bit older and thinking to the future, how can I keep surfing? And so some people said at the beginning, this is a sport for older people, um, which is yes and no, because yes, it's great for older, but it's great for everybody. So it was interesting that that um, got some people really interested who were thinking, uh, yeah, maybe my knees aren't so good and popping up from surf. This is a good transition. Maybe I'll look at it. But then they would see how good people were. And I don't know if you want to share how old you are because you're still 
absolutely amazing. I think Corky Carroll just wrote a piece on you and watching you rip <laughs> um, on a sub surfboard has changed his mind about it. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, I so, think that was. <laughs> so I, I was at a trade show and, and I run into these couple guys, you know, and we're talking and they go, yeah, you know, we were down in Me mainland Mexico and, we had our set boards and we're standing on the beach and we're, you know, it's early in the morning and everything. And this guy comes running down the beach and he introduces oh. himself. My name's Corky Carroll. Oh, by the way, there's no sub surfing on this beach till afternoon. And, and so. <laughs> he just made up that rule himself. Well, huh? <laughs> he made up that rule because that's where he surfed and he, and he wasn't into sub surfing then or even paddling so now fast forward a, a year or two and uh corky and i are doing a documentary sh uh, shoot in baja and he and i hadn't surfed together in 30 years right and you know he's living on mainland mexico and rarely coming up to california or up to the states and then i'm in baja and Anyway, we just hadn't surfed and we used to surf together all the time. And uh, so we're shooting this documentary and, and I, I take him to a spot uh, where, you know, you had to do a blood pack to get in there, you know, uh, swear you, you don't know the name of it. Anyway, and the surf's kind of funky, not really very good, but I mean, compared to what it could be, but Corky is an excellent surfer. So I'm doing some stuff on the beach. He gets in the water. He's riding a few waves. And I finally, I paddle out and I paddle out beyond him and kind of beyond this rock. He's inside the rock. I'm outside the rock. First wave I catch, I go by the rock, barely missing it because there are some options. You can go inside, but it's dangerous and rocky and tricky. And I just barely made it by the end of the rock and went down the line twice as far as he had gone. And he was always a much better surfer than me and proceeded to paddle back out and catch probably four or five waves to his one you know, every one he was catching. So we end up on the beach and finally, and Corky gave me a great compliment. He said, you know, he said, you, you were the first one that made stand up surfing look fun. I'm interested. So I lined him up with a quick blade paddle. I lined him up with a board. He went back to Mexico and started stand up surfing. Now, uh, forward again to Salt Creek, and Sparky had Corky come up and be one of the announcers at that last paddle battle. And I think that's what it was. I believe it was. Anyway, and Cor Corky, a week before he came up, he's emailing me and he's going, I'm having problems with my backhand turns. What do I do? And so I wrote out this whole thing on how to cut back and everything. And two days before he was to fly to California, he, he writes me this email and I can just hear him hooting and shouting, I just did one of the best turns I've ever done and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then, you know, he comes and does this announcing and and, you know, and of course, surf when he was up here, stand up. And, and so, you know, <laughs> totally hooked. You did a whole turnaround on him. He did, I did a whole turnaround on him. Yeah. So. Well, you're getting many shout outs and alohas. <laughs> we do have a request from your audience because they can't see you very well. Oh. Can, can you get either closer or move the phone down a little? There we go. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> okay. That's a little better. Yeah. We're seeing more ceiling than you. Okay. <laughs> well, the ceiling could be interesting. I've got yeah. birds and... <laughs> oh, there, tour of their house. <laughs> so, 
Yeah. That is all good. Yeah. So, you know, you've been shaper, surfer, you've been in events. Um, one of my favorite things, um, you've, you've been in many videos, documentaries, movies, books. Your, I think most recent book, maybe you've had one since then, but I love No Bad Waves because it really shows you have so much aloha and I, I love that about the sport. And while I love surfing, I haven't always felt that in surfing. There's kind of both sides of surfing. So, so talk about that because I do think it over, you know, really plays a big part in our paddling world and people who love the ocean. No Bad Waves. Well, Mickey Munoz. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the difference is, you know, of course, you know, if you're in the water surfing a subboard, now you're, you're competing for waves, right? And and because of the population and surfing, there are usually more surfers than waves, so it gets real competitive. And and you're right, you know, there's an attitude a lot of times in the water. Um, you know, luckily, uh, stand up surfing and paddling is, yes, it can be competitive if you're racing, that's for sure. But it's, it's kind of a mutual admiration, you know, good paddlers, uh, are respected and, and are usually willing to share their knowledge and, and, um, and I think there's a real camaraderie, especially because it's a relatively new sport. Um, and, and uh, you know, it goes through phases just like surfing, you know, has and will continue going through. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in a place, if you're surfing a sup board and you're in a place where it's real competitive, a lot of, a lot of people in the water, it, it, the attitudes change a little bit for sure. But for the most part, uh, if you're paddling for the, the beauty of standing on a, on a sup board, your vision is great. Your posture is great. It's a wonderful for your physicality and and just the advantage of being on a board able to paddle uh paddle around the harbor i mean half the women are way better paddlers than i am and i love <laughs> paddling behind them <laughs> that's fine with me um, um so so uh, i think there's a real camaraderie in it and and again, because it's still uh, blossoming, if you will. And, um, you know, you know, and for all the young people, watch Kai Lenny on a sub board. You know, if you don't think it's surfing, you know, watch him chop up a, in a 50 foot wave on a sub. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. You yeah, you mentioned the harbor. Of course, we're in a very sad situation right now locally because we had an oil spill and the harbors are closed. And we unfortunately just had to announce today that I was going to see you this Saturday at the, the Harbor Hoot, which is a fun event. But I, I bring it up not only because we're sad and we're going to miss it, but um, it's an event very similar to one that you got started. And again, that was a lot about that camaraderie. You put together relay teams at the Mongoose Cup. Um, with random people. I know I was put with people and met people through that um, short, close races on flat water. So we we found ways to have lots of fun and community. And that's certainly still such a huge part of this. Um, but also, there's been this big surge. And like you said, things come and go and change during this pandemic and strange time, huge surge in the outdoors and interest and um, people have started paddling have started surfing camping, biking, all of it. But we were really hoping this is the kind of event that you can get new people in. In fact, one of Anthony Vela's goals is a high percentage of people doing their very first event. We tried to call it an event more than a race to be less intimidating because it is for fun. And yes, there's you know a time on it or maybe a placing time on it, but it's just a way to get together and, and enjoy the water. So I, I hope to see even more of that entry-level stuff and that we can move this huge recreational base 
into some of the niches that you and I and many others love, like racing, like surfing. Um, and that leads me into the next question. I think you've been trying some new offshoots, um, which there are quite a few of. What, what have you tried recently in um, the stand-up paddle wind and wave world? Um, well, of course, you know, I'm real tempted to get into foiling and, and uh, foiling is not so easy. Uh, you pay your dues. And um, so I've, I've tried a, a bit of it and um and i'll probably continue you know doing that but you know now i'm counting waves you know where i when i was younger and <laughs> and and so forth i i never mm -hmm. would but now if i get one or two good waves i'm a happy camper right i think you know part of this whole thing is, with the recreation is that that you know, the equipment has gotten better. It's gotten lighter. It's gotten more durable. It's gotten more affordable. Uh, and again, I I refer back to paddles. There are a lot more carbon paddles on the market. You know, obviously, China's been making, you know, paddles that are carbon. And they're, you know, they pass. They're better than the, the uh, uh you know, the old uh, aluminum shaft and, pardon me? Don't forget to give Jimmy Terrell a shout out. Cool. <laughs> he yeah. has, but we can do it again. Peggy, oh. I know you have to leave, so come in and say hi. Oh yeah, no, no, she has to go, so. I know, does she want to squeeze in my... and say hello to us? <laughs> Here, darling, say hello. We're using her account because Mickey hi. doesn't have <laughs> Hi, Peg, thank you so much for helping make this happen. Uh, oh. Oh, now he's a, he's official now. Well, so <laughs> he's taking my phone. So, you know, do you have it? Don't lose it. <laughs> okay. Well, you're and, Again, yeah. we greatly appreciate you making, because you had to jump through some hoops to make a social media <laughs> thing work when that. <laughs> so, so back, you know, I think, I think the equipment's gotten better. You know, the inflatable market is, is huge where, you know, people don't have the storage or, the the vehicle to be able to you know schlep a big paddleboard you know to the water and and mm -hmm. the inflatable thing has been doing really well and the paddles are better um, there's more knowledge that's available so if you need instruction you can go online and again Jimmy Terrell has beautiful mm -hmm. videos on paddling techniques and you know, and how to how to pick out a paddle and and how to you know size it for your body and um, so it's it's made it for the beginner a much easier process. And I think one of your questions, and I I'm going to refer to my notes here, but um, uh, oh something about um, you know, what would I do different now than I did then? And, and my answer was sort of probably not much because for me, it was all about a learning process and growing with it. From a board design, I could see the future because I had been in the past in, in surfboard design and I, I see where surfboard design is today. And I knew that that sub board design would go in that direction. And as the longer I did it, the better my balance got. So, so especially when you get older to have good balance and, and, and have, you know, strong legs and, 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 a, you know, um, uh, abdominals, et cetera, is a huge asset. Mm -hmm. to living a longer, healthier life. And when you mentioned pandemic, uh, you know, people, I think, are realizing that, that you know, you got the people you love and the people that love you and your health and the rest is all total bullshit. So, you know, that's why you want to get out and paddle. Absolutely. And <laughs> are you hearing me or are you? 
Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And um, <laughs> so, so true. And your wife okay. Peg paddles, right? That's something you could do together where you might not be oh, surfing she, waves with her. I have to follow her. She kicks my ass. Are you kidding? She's a great paddler. <laughs> she paddles almost every day. Literally. I mean, she really does. She probably paddles five times a week. That is fantastic. So, and maybe before she wasn't in the ocean that much, I assume, before stand up? No, no, she you know, she when we got together I I I you know <laughs> we you know I'm gonna teach her how to surf and, and so of course it's like okay, do a push up on the beach and now stand up and <laughs> and which foot forward do you put, right? Which and and uh I, she ended up uh, putting her right foot forward, which would have made her a goofy foot. And I went, no, no, wrong foot. <laughs> no. I knew there'd be enough arguments that are we going to argue about which which uh, surf break are we going to go to? So she learned to surf pretty well, but she never became as passionate about surfing as I am. And, and she loves paddling and loves the racing. And so you know, she got into that side of it. And, and I liked racing too, but, but I'm more or less paddling against myself. You know, there weren't that many racers in my age category. So, and, and, you know, when it first started, you know, the categories were more limited, you know, 20 and under and, and 50 and under or something. And I was already over 50. So, you know, I, I'm now competing against you know, younger people. So, I, but I was really interested in the board design and and interested, of course, in downwind paddling. And 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 it turns out that that I do better in distance than I do in sprints. So, I, I you know, we did Catalina and we did you know some other long long kind of races and and um, that was you know, fascinating to me. And I helped Tom Jones do the his paddle uh, from Oregon border to the Mexican border, uh, which was one of the very early first long distance paddles. I mean, now, you know, uh, they're, they're doing unbelievable long distance, but it was very fun for me as a kind of backyard engineer and designer to d help design a board and design a, a a system that we could work with down the coast and uh, you know a lot of places on the on the northern uh, California coast you can't drive to and only way yeah. you can get there is by boat and you you can't have a little boat you better know the your business because it's serious water. That was an amazing early accomplishment, Tom Jones. Yeah. I forgot that you had had so much to do with that in the board. And yeah. Everything. yeah. So Fantastic. anyway, yeah. So, so I forget where we were with all of that. <laughs> but, but again, but, oh, yeah, back to the, back to what would I do different? Probably not a lot. I mean, I think because I, I cut that kayak paddle off and, and glued the, the handle on it, you know, I learned that, that, you know, the paddle, uh, quality of the paddle and paddle design is probably the most important part of the whole process. Again, you can paddle a door. So. They even were shaped like that for a while. I never had that one. <laughs> they called the door. <laughs> exactly. All different shapes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Importance of paddle. Hey, well, I do want to back up a little bit because we might have some young people here who, believe it or not, don't know your history. And I, oops, there it goes. <laughs> there, that's really good. We can really see you. Perfect. Uh, um, no, no, talk a little bit about, because even before stand up, you had just some amazing things in your life through the surf world and were no, very well known, already a legend in, in the surf world. And now you're humble, but talk about, you know, nicknames and, and surf stances that are named after you like this one and um, being a double in a movie. Tell us a little bit of historic highlights from your surf life before SUP. So 
I, I first stood up in probably 1947, and I was right at the tail end of of 100-pound boards, you know, uh, balsa <laughs> redwood, you know, boards. And, and, and luckily, because, you know, I weighed 50 pounds or whatever it was, you know, at the time. And, and, uh, and so, you know, having that advantage, uh, and, and then having Malibu, uh, through the early fifties, which was, you know, the perfect wave and, and a bunch of young kids equal, you know, my age group and stuff that were passionate about surfing and pushing each other. We, we would, you know, we would, we would push each other and, and try and outdo each other and all of that. And so you asked about stances. Um, so, you know, back to Malibu again, you know, you're on this wave and your friends are paddling out and you're going, you know, besides, okay, how close to the nose can I get? Or how radical a turn can I do? Or, or maybe I could do some, pose of some kind of stance right so and at the same time we we're we we're going into you know traveling down into northern baja and, and you know we'd end up at the bullfights and of course the bullfighters have all these 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 passes and mm -hmm. and and uh stances that they go through and they name them so we started naming some of our poses uh, after bullfighting and oh i didn't know that yeah so so uh myself and and my friend bobby patterson who was considered uh at the time probably the best small wave rider in the world from hawaii had moved to california in the very early 50s and he ended up needing a place to live and so he and I were surfing together and I had a, I came from a family of five. I had my own room with my own entrance and my own bathroom. So early on, I was living almost independent of the rest of the family. And, you know, Bobby, heck yes, you know, stay with me. So he and I are, you know, surfing together all the time. Well, one of our our surfing rituals used to be we drive Pacific Coast Highway from Santa Monica Canyon. We drive up through Malibu in the winter, drive up to Overhead, which was an outside break, kind of like Sunset Beach in Hawaii. And our ritual paddling out, we paddle out on one side of the peak or the he would be on one side, I'd be on the other, and we'd try and time it. So when the wave broke, we're looking at each other through the barrel. Oh, wow. And then when overhead would blow out, we'd go to Rincon, ride Rincon until it would kind of blow out. And then we'd drive back down the coast and we went to, a, we, we used to stop at a place called Arroyo Seco's. And it could hold a northwesterly wind. It was kind of side off shore there. So Bobby and I, one day, this is in 1950, I think, 51, 50, 51, something like that. We, we stopped, stopped there and, and we're surfing and, and, and behind us is John Severson, who spots our car and sees us out surfing. And so he, he, sets up his bolex on the on the beach, you know, or on the PCH and he's shooting photos of us or he's shooting uh, film, 16 mill millimeter film. And of course, you know, it's not like today where you get instant gratification, you know, doing selfies and you can you watch yourself in two seconds <laughs> you know, what you're doing. Um, you know, the, then it was weeks, you know, you're waiting for the film to get developed and then you've got to go see it. And so John, John had shot 
bunch of footage of Bobby and I, and he said, hey, would you like to see it? I just got it back from the, the lab. Mm -hmm. So I went over to John's place, and he's looking at this 16-millimeter film through what they called a moviola, which they'd have a reel of film, you know, an empty reel over here, and the film would go through this little window, and you're now looking at a, you know, yeah. a tiny little 16-millimeter frame, and then you could magnify it. And we're looking at this footage frame for frame. And if you liked a certain thing, it, you could also cut and 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 uh, glue the film together. So you could cut sections out and edit that way. So we're looking at all these different shots he's got. And finally, we roll through this one. And I don't remember whether it was John or myself. I went into this shore break where I... It's pretty sure I wasn't going to make it. So I just did this pose, which we later named uh, Quasimodo after the, yes, yeah, exactly. That's after, it. That's it. <laughs> and, and so, so that, that ended up as one of the uh, feature photos in the very first uh, Surfer magazine. Oh, it was in the very first. I didn't realize that. That's no, amazing. No, no. Yep, very first one. So this one's based on a photo, <laughs> and a paddle is added, of course. <laughs> yeah. Because it so, was before so that. Happened. anyway, that's how the Quasimodo came about. And then, ah. you know, I, we had the Espontaneo and the El Telefono, and those are kind of bullfight uh, genre. And, and anyway, that's kind of how that, pose thing got going and and then of course nose writing became you know a highly skilled uh, uh, part of longboard surfing yeah. and then, of course when longboards went went out and shortboards came in and and being little myself I immediately gravitated to shortboards I love the speed and I I love the design and the the planing and all of that. And so uh, that's where, you know, I ended up till I got to the point where I, I couldn't pop up anymore reliably enough. And so, uh, yeah, well, and then in between that time, longboards came back into vogue and for a long time, you know, the really good hot shit longboarders are trying to do shortboard maneuvers and you're going, well, you know, you want to do that, ride a shortboard. It's a better deal, you know. And and now, you know, because of of uh, uh, the way longboarding's gone, it's kind of gone more traditional and and more into nose riding and still into some, you know, high uh, you know, uh, level maneuvering, but more into traditional longboarding. So, I love watching people walk walk the board and be on the nose, and the the style and grace of that. I just think is, I will always enjoy watching that. Yeah, I never Joel, got to the point of surfing to do it myself, but yeah, yeah I think Joel <laughs> Truder, Joel Truder was kind of the one that really kind of got that back going with his duct tape. Uh, you know, events and, and uh, so, uh, and longboarding, I mean, I got back into longboarding, made myself tons of longboards and, and, you know, I'm riding what I call my short uh, longboard or my long shortboard, which is kind of a longboard shape, you know, for, for uh, supping and, and, you know, you, it's a board you could, from paddle out and surf, so. But my balance has gotten better, so I've been able to deal with it. And uh, yeah. Uh, you've yeah. Gi given us, back to stand up, you've given us some great tips and ideas about equipment and paddle first, but you know, good companies like Quick Blade you've mentioned, um, ideas about, you know, what getting into it and everything. Any other thoughts, any other tips on getting into stand up? Um, thoughts about um, you spend much of your time down in Mexico. We were very lucky. Um, WPA had an event right in Cabo 
And one of the events was a downwinder and we got to, that was so neat to see East Cape um, and, and to walk by your house. And um, I want to say the Hobies, but the, you know, the Alter family's house is right near yours and then start from there. Um, really amazing place that you live. And I know you spend time with the waves down there. Um, so you sup surf and you, and you and your wife together both sup paddle in different ways. Um, you, you mentioned downwinding. I don't know if you've done more of that. You, um, like you said, foiling you're interested in. I know my friend Andy mentioned winging and kiting and using the wind or other, you know, amazing source from Mother Nature where there's, I love the crossover that we have in wind and waves. But anything more about um, tips or things you'd love to enjoy? No, but I, well, I'll get into that. But you brought up the, the event in, down there in, in Baja on the East Cape. And, and that event was under Mike Doyle's name. And Mike, of course, was a fabulous, you know, well-known uh, uh, surfer and athlete. And he got into stand-up paddling. So the event, the downwind part of that event started in our arroyo. And Peggy and I had just flown down the night before. And, and I wasn't even sure I was going to go in it. I didn't have any real race for it or anything to do it. And, but, you know, everybody's gathering in the Arroyo and, and they're going, come on, we got a board for you. And blah, okay. And I got a paddle and I got my hydration pack and I'm scrambling around trying to, cause it was about an 11 or 12 mile paddle, yeah. you know, a fairly serious paddle, at least for me. And Mike was in it. Well, Mike and I had been friends since Malibu days in the 50s, right? And we both were lifeguards and we both competed swimming, paddling, rowing boats, uh, you know, prone paddling and surfing all over the world. And, and I had never beaten Mike ever. One event, I did, we did a lifeguard event, which was a, which was a run, swim, paddle, row. Oh, wow. Rowing All four. Row, right? So, and, you know, Mike is an unbelievable athlete. Well, I lucked up in the, when I got in the Dory, I'd only rowed a Dory two or three times in my life. So, you know, and I'm a little person. He's twice my size. So, we're out there and I, I, he's way ahead of me and I catch this outside set and I ride this wave. Well, by the time I get to him and now I'm passing him, I'm going, no shit, I may be able to beat Mike here. And I spun <laughs> out and Mike caught the wave, the, what was left of the wave and beat me to the beach, right? So, <laughs> he, so now, you know, fast forward, you know, 25, 30 years or more and you know we're still you know we've been snowboarding together and you know it's still a competitive deal among friends right and he was a great snowboarder really good so uh, i i couldn't beat him <laughs> i couldn't beat him in snowboarding either but so we you know i'm scrambling around to do this this uh downwinder and it's the wind's hooting it's like really blowing hard. And by the time I get my act together, I am last around the starting line. Mike is already, you know, halfway to Punta Gorda. And he's, he's you know, and he's the local, uh, local knowledge and everything. So anyway, I, I finally, I'm paddling, I'm paddling, I'm paddling. Well, I, it turns out I, I for some reason, was paddling faster than Mike. And I caught up with Mike and I, I, I got right behind him. And, you know, stand up, stand up, it's hard to turn around and look behind you, you know, and especially, I mean, Mike wasn't full time supping. So, you know, and he's kind of struggling along. And, and uh, so I go, hey, you're a local. What's your strategy? Because, you know, you can either go inside, 
you go down the middle or you could mm -hmm. go outside and you couldn't see the mark. The mark was too far away, right? And and with that, Mike falls off <laughs> and I paddled by him. I said, okay, see you later. And that's the only time I ever beat him. Yeah. Did yeah. he even realize it was you asking for me? Well, behind? of course, after I passed him, I, I <laughs> kind of turned back and... and <laughs> Well, you have very special memories of that race then. Yeah, that was that was a fun WPA one. Thank you, Byron Kurt, for that. That was one of those great events in the early days annually that moved around to different places. They had some fun ones. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so and so the original your your question though was uh, more any more advice, right? I don't know. You know, my again, I I go back Make it easy. Make it fun. fun. You want to be laughing and smiling. You want to make it fun. And, you know, it's a great, great thing for couples because, uh, you know, turns out women are excellent paddlers and and become excellent paddlers. And, and so if there's any difference in strength, it's more than equaled by grace and 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 brains <laughs> and women are generally smarter than men <laughs> and so so you know it's it's yeah have your mate have your partner have your friend you know do it with you because you want to share it and and it's you know and it's simple you know with yeah. with you don't need a whole lot of gear. It's not, you know, snowboarding, you need a lot of stuff. Skiing, you need a lot of stuff. Sailing, you need a lot of stuff. You know, sub paddling, you know, really a board and a paddle and a leash. Do not go on your board without a leash. Thank you for that safety shout out and tip. Absolutely, because, yeah, the Coast Guard said if you tie a, an inflator, you know, a Coast Guard, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Life vest on your board, you're legal, but that doesn't make you safe because you fall off the board and the board blows away. Guess what? There goes your flotation. Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> the added one and the board itself, exactly. which is a flotation. Yeah. Device. So yeah. always wear a leash and, and, and even. You know, even on days, you, it looks glassy and easy and, oh, and that, that's no problem. I'm only in the harbor. You go outside the harbor, suddenly there's more bump, gusts of wind come up, you fall off, boat wake, uh, you fall off, you catch your fin on kelp, you fall off. Yeah. yeah. You want, to be, you want that's, that's way more flotation than that, that life vest. So, yeah, that, that, and, and, you know, I just don't trust the water, you know, as long as I've been in it, uh, you get surprised. And so, you know, make sure you're prepped, make sure you, you know, you've got enough, enough protection, clothing, et cetera, whatever you're, you know, however you're going or wherever. Hydration if you'll be out there a long time. Yeah. But, we respect Mother Nature. I think people who are really have been in the water even more like you, what an example of someone who knows the water, realizes the, the potentials for, for problems, which doesn't mean you should stay away from it. It just means you need to be smart about it and exactly. think about it with leashes yeah. and other things. Exactly. Yeah. Great, great advice. Yeah. Well, your aloha has not diminished in any way. It is so wonderful to talk with you and um, hear your stories. And I know you have zillions more. Um, you still have a website, don't you? MickeyMunoz.com? I sorry? do, but I, I just use that as, I don't Yeah, know. I mean, I guess a bookstore is the be best place or Amazon to buy a book, one if of your you books. Want, yeah, no, no bad waves. You can buy it through Patagonia or Amazon. And I think they even have it digitally now. Um, yeah. In fact, I can buy it on Amazon almost as cheap as I can buy it from Patagonia. So. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Yeah. But support yeah. Patagonia. That's a better place to go to it. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they've been very good to me. And 
you know, Patagonia is a great company for sure. Yeah, they really are. We appreciate all that they do and those companies that do give back in different ways. Yeah. And we appreciate you and all that you have done for the sport of stand up paddling, for surfing and for just being a, an amazing human. And please thank Peg, too. And um, again, sorry that I won't be seeing you this Saturday, but glad you're in town. And I, I appreciate so much and subconnect us to you giving us this opportunity. It's actually right away on Instagram. You can find it. If you, those of you listening, if you know somebody who missed it, they'll want to hear his, uh, our interview and, and all the great stories and advice that Mickey had to give. And then it will end up on YouTube, both subconnects. And I have one called KT Outside that um, will have this also. Joseph says, hi. Um, you had so many people saying, I don't know if you saw all the things scrolling by. Right. But there are a lot. <laughs> I've been looking at you because there are a lot. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Some of your relatives, there's a couple of Munoz's, oh, yeah. Petey and somebody else were watching. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. And a lot of friends, uh, you know, Andy was on and uh, he did yeah. way back from the beginning. Uh, right. Oh, I forgot to ask. Terry wanted to know if you still do Tai Chi. Uh, I never really did Tai Chi. I do fake Tai Chi. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it doesn't I matter guess, if it's good. I it's do good. kind of a stick dance in the morning on the, on the beach d down there and and do my run. I, I run every morning pre oh. with my, wow. my dogs, and it's trackless powder, and it's warm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not freezing in the snow. I'm sorry we ran out of time because you were going to show pictures, but if you want to send any, Mickey is a great photographer. He was sharing a bunch of gorgeous pictures of on water and off water and the dogs and the house and um keep doing that great stuff thank you well i thank you i'm really honored that you asked me to do this and hi to all my friends and i hope we can you know i hope we do that event you know yes the, they're waiting because of the oil spill they can't right. tell them a date yet but we um, will postpone it and we'll be picking a new date to all get together at Perfect. baby beach in dana point harbor um, one of our many spots that has been such a focal point of the last decade, decade and a half for you <laughs> um, in paddleboarding. So thank you, Mickey. Take care. Yep. Be well. Wonderful to chatting with you. All right. You and got I do hope to see you soon. Right. Adios. Adios. <laughs>